Shalom, everyone. Thank you for joining us and allowing us to read this book. I happened to find on an internet website that was scrubbed. I had to use the Wayback Machine and then copy and paste this. So uh, I don't know the title of the book originally, but this is called Target of America for Chapter 1. And that's what I've been calling the book itself. It has to do with the Catholic overthrow of our country, starting with the Black Conspiracy in 1814 and going all the way through to the World Trade Center bombing in 2001 at the very least. So without further ado, <clears throat> this is Chapter 1, Target America. The United States must soon face the most deadly enemy it will ever have to face. This enemy is not only the usual military enemy, but it has the organization and capability for massive espionage and clandestine operations within the United States. It uses a facade that is virtually perfect to hide its operations. In fact, Right now, this enemy is working secretly to undermine the principles that made this country the greatest nation in the world. And it's been far past just working to undermine them. It's been 20 years into that. <clears throat> this enemy has infiltrated the highest levels and departments of the U.S. government and poses an extreme danger to America. Let us look at a little history and comprehend the methods of this enemy has used in the past and how it is secretly working today. <clears throat> Europe was finally at rest. The Napoleonic Wars were now over. And for a little background, the Napoleonic Wars were themselves instigated by the Jesuits, and the whole purpose for it was to rein in. Europe and get the subservient back to Rome. <clears throat> Since having lasted nearly 20 years, the brilliant and crafty Napoleon had sp spread Europe with the blood of her noblest sons. At long last, there was Shalom. In the aftermath, European sovereigns convened a general council in Vienna, Austria, in 1814. <clears throat> this council has come to be known as the Council of Vienna. This is also mentioned in one of the very longer histories, but it brushes over this in not as distinct detail. Um, there's a video for it on one, my YouTube channel. I saved it in the Things Not As It Seems uh, library <clears throat> says this council has come to be known as the council of vienna the congress continued its proceedings for one year ending in 1815 the congress of vienna was a black conspiracy against popular governments at which the high contracting parties which is what they called themselves within the document announced at its close that they had formed a holy alliance. This was a cloak under which they masked to deceive the people. The particular business of the Congress of Vienna, or Verona, rather, it developed, was the ratification of Article 6 of the Congress of Vienna, which was, in short, <clears throat> a promise to prevent or destroy popular governments wherever found, and to reestablish monarchy where it had been set aside. The high contracting parties of this compact were Russia, Prussia, which is Germany, Austria, and Little Horn Pius the Seventh. I'm sorry, the Eighth. Um, that was right the first time. The Seventh. I king of the papal states entered into a secret treaty to do so burke mccarthy the suppressed truth about the assassination of abraham lincoln aria varta publishing 1924 page 7 
According to McCarthy, McCarthy, yeah, the Congress of Vienna formed the Holy Alliance, whose primary goal was the destruction of all popular governments. Popular governments are those where the government allows its subjects to enjoy certain inalienable rights. <clears throat> and more specifically, our constitutional re republic is by the people, for the people. We the people on defeating the English crown in the Revolutionary War were declared the sovereigns of the land, individually ruling ourselves to self-govern according to the instructions of our creator. And that is the constitutional republic that we established. The limited government that is enumerated within the constitution is the bounds and chains, as Thomas Jefferson put it, on the government that they are supposed to be held to, which they are horrendously violating because we're mostly ignorant of the truth. All right. <clears throat> Can you think of any popular governments that were establishing themselves in the world and granting their citizens certain inalienable rights around the year 1815? Senator Robert L. Owen placed in the congressional record of April 5th or April 25th, 1916, the following statement, which shows clearly he thought the primary target of the Holy Alliance was the United States. And it was Senator Owen who also put in the entire copy of the recording or a transcript of the Council of Vienna in congressional record. I believe it was also Senator Owen that put in the Jesuit oath into congressional record. <clears throat> and here's the quote. It says, The Holy Alliance, having destroyed popular government in Spain and in Italy, had well laid plans also to destroy popular government in, Ameri or in the American colonies, which had revolted from Spain and Portugal in Central and South America under the influence of the successful example of the United States. And another thing to keep in mind, it, it was around this time, uh, they were also doing consolidation in empire. It's always been the goal of Rome to rule over the nations and to try to consolidate it. They tried to do it during the reign of Clovis and then in his uh, son, Oh, what was his name? He was more famous than Clovis, and I can't remember. Most of the presidents today are related to him specifically, but he was the first emperor of the Holy Roman Empire. Um, <clears throat> that, oh, well, I can't remember his name at the You're moment. Speaking of Constantine? Not Constantine, um, the Holy Roman Empire. So after it was broken up into 10 nations by the Germanic hordes that came through and destroyed pagan Rome, three of them were uprooted at the rising of the Little Horn to power, as it was foretold. And then they tried to do consolidation. And he had a particular um, monarch that he chose to be the emperor of the Holy Roman Empire, but he never got full control. <clears throat> Uh, he was the, he was the king of France, and he consolidated and got most of that area, but they never had full control of Germany. Eventually, <clears throat> they kept trying to do that over and over again. And by 1814, you had Prussia, but it was a smaller nation state. Um, it wasn't so large as it was later on. The kingdom of Hanover over was separate. It was not a part of this. It was Protestant. By the Germanic Wars, there was three waves of Germans that came. And when I speak, when I'm saying Germans, I mean the Germanic high and low German speaking Hebrews, as opposed to the English or Swedish or other speaking Hebrews or the Celtic speaking Hebrews that later came over or went over beforehand. But there's three waves of German migrants to America. And one of those happened after the... <clears throat> The Prussian War, where they had conquered Hanover, 
It's when my forefather came to America around 1867, and he became a citizen in 1871. Sadly, it was after the Civil War and, or sorry, 1874, so it was three years into the incorporated usurpation of our government. <clears throat> but we'll get to that as we read. It says, it was because of this conspiracy against the American republics by the European monarchies that the great English statesman Canning called the attention of our government to it. That's from the same book, pages 9 and 10. Senator Owen comprehended from the Congress of Vienna that the United States monarchies of Europe would seek to destroy the great American republic and its blood-bought freedoms. Senator Owen was not only or not the only one who knew about this conspiracy against the freedom of a, <clears throat> against American freedom and the Constitution. In 1894, R. W. Thompson, American Secretary of the Navy, wrote. The sovereigns of the Holy Alliance had massed large armies and soon entered into a pledge to devote them to the suppression of all uprisings of the people in favor of free government. <clears throat> and he, Little Horn Pius VII, desired to devote the Jesuits, supported by his pontifical power, to the accomplishment of that end. He knew how trustworthily or faithfully they would apply themselves to that work, and hence he counseled them in his decree of restoration, because it was Pius VII there, the little horn, who restored the order after about 40 years of being disbanded by Clement the, was it the ninth? And he was poisoned for his trouble. There was three monarchies that were overthrown. Louis of France was beheaded. Uh, the Habsburgs were punished. The, the Jesuits were retaliating through in, insurrections and other things and then took back control. But what they didn't have control of was the popular government that was coming about through believers that were leaving this type of thing. <clears throat> that was actually foretold in Revelation as something that was given from above. And I highly encourage everyone to look into the Antichrist for Dummies series on YouTube by the channel Chris, ChristmasIsALie.com. And you'll see firsthand, test it, prove it out. You'll see firsthand that America was foretold as the uh, place where the woman fled to the wilderness with the wings of an eagle for a time. <clears throat> It says, in his decree of restoration to strictly observe useful advices and salutary counsels, whereby Loyola had made absolution the cornerstone of the society. And for more on that, you would have to look at their Monita Secreta and the Jesuit order's constitution for how they operate. They literally are told to do despicable things contrary to the, the good news. Like everything they... Everything that's reprehensible, they, they're told to do to widows. But again, it's just like Satanism or witchcraft. You have to do the things pleasing to him to be a partaker of the gifts of his spirit. Just like if you want to do have the benefits of the Ruach of Yahuwah, you have to do his will. There's no other way around it. <clears throat> It says that was from R.W. Thompson, The Footprints of the Jesuits Hunt and Eaton, 1894, page 251. Thompson pinpointed exactly who would be the agents used by the monarchs of Europe to destroy the Republic of America, namely the Jesuits of Rome. Since 1815, there has been a continual assault on America by the Jesuits to try to destroy the constitutional rights of this great nation. 
And there's better orators than me who've been doing videos for a long time about the fact that our Constitution is an inspired document underneath. It's a covenant with our Creator. They were not successful in its making until they humbled themselves to pray on a daily basis that they would have His will and done. Then they steamrolled through it. And there's no doubt that it is an inspired document. There was a Harvard study that was done. They found that it, most of it came from Deuteronomy. They found that of 25,000 documents of the, the founders, over, I think it was 97%, you can't quote me there, but well over 90% of their writings were either direct quotes from scripture or quotes from men who were quoting scripture. So they were they knew it in and out, they lived it, they breathed it, they asked for it, and they were given a covenant with our creator where they were going to be obedient to him alone. And that's why our our country is founded under the common law, which is scripture, and under freedom of conscience is a pillar of what's established in our government. Men are sovereign over themselves, and you have liberty of conscience to serve your maker according to the dictates of how you comprehend his word. And here he goes, says, the famous inventor of Morse code, Samuel B. Morse, also wrote of this sinister plot against the United States. Quote, the author undertakes to show that a conspiracy against the liberties of this republic is now in full action. And this was written in 1835. Under the direction of the wily prince Metternich of Austria, who knowing the impossibility of obliterating this troublesome example of a great and free nation by force of arms, is attempting to accomplish his object through the agency of an army of Jesuits. The array of facts and arguments going to prove the existence of such a conspiracy will astonish any man who opens the book with the same incredulity as we did. Samuel B. Morse, Foreign Conspiracy Against the Liberties of the United States. And that was, again, 1835, and that was part of the preface. <clears throat> the array of books written that detail the sinister plots of the Congress of Vienna and the Jesuits against the American Republic are numerous. That this conspiracy has raged since 1815 is a fact of history. We will show that this conspiracy is in full force today, and that it is the reason America is having so many problems at the present time, and is so close to losing her freedoms. Most people know very little about the Little Horns Jesuits. The reason for this, and <clears throat> for, for anyone who's listening, I say Little Horn because we're to call no man father. And uh, Papa Pope is just another name for father there, which I won't call. Him. So sorry about that. <clears throat> it says the reason for this is that they are a very secretive society. In order to comprehend or understand what the order of the Jesuits is, please consider the following quotation. Throughout Christendom, Protestantism was menaced by a formidable, or sorry, by formidable foes. The first triumphs of the Reformation passed. Rome summoned new forces, hoping to accomplish its destruction. At this time, the order of the Jesuits was created. The most cruel, unscrupulous, and powerful of all the champions of popery, or the Little Horn. Cut off from earthly ties and man's interests. Dead to the claims of natural affection, reason and conscience wholly silenced. They knew no rule, no tie, but that to their order. And no duty but to extend its power. 
the Besorah of Mashiach had enabled its adherents to meet. Accidentally skipped a little too much. Apologize. I'll start reading again. They said, The Besorah of Mashiach had enabled its adherents to meet danger and endure suffering, undismayed by cold, hunger, toil, and poverty. To uphold the banner of truth in the face of the rack, the dungeon, and the stake. To combat these forces, Jesuitism inspired its followers with a fanaticism that enabled them to endure like dangers and to oppose the power of truth, all the weapons of deception. There was no crime too great for them to commit, no deception too base for them to practice, no disguise too difficult for them to assume. Vow to perpetual poverty and humility, it was their studied aim to secure wealth and power, to be devoted to the overthrow of Protestantism and the reestablishment of the Little Horn's supremacy. <clears throat> So you see, they were in the height of hypocrisy, if you realize what it means. Because while pretending to be religious and, and observing the Bible, they were serving the adversary intentionally and lying about it. While one was founded on truth, they were doing deception. They're actually the forerunners of what the CIA is. And the CIA was founded after the espionage principles of the Jesuit order, and they've ran it and controlled it through proxies the entire time, mostly. I believe there was also actual open Jesuits as the head not too long ago. <clears throat> but it says, when appearing as members of their order, they wore a garb of saint sanctity, visiting prisons and hospitals, ministering to the sick and the poor professing to have renounced the world and bearing the set-apart name or the sacred name of the horse, because that's literally what they call on, who went about doing good. But under this blameless exterior, the most criminal and deadly purposes were often concealed. And for anyone who wants more information on this, you can look at the scripture study we did not too long ago on Gad the Seer chapter 1. It goes into detail about that through the three woes that our Mashiach was going to suffer through. The removal of his refuge, which is the name of Yahuwah, was the second woe happened at the coming of literally Sixtus the Third, 666 and uh, the rise of Constantine and the Byzantine army, and the enforcement by the sword of Rome of the Catholic municipal statutes of enforcing the Trinity doctrine, the feast days that are paganized usurpations that are just, they put a Christian label and call it good with Easter, Christmas, Lent, Ash Wednesday, Mardi Gras, Carnival, Halloween, every one of them is satanic. It's all literally witchcraft that they get the people to involve themselves with. So it has to be repented of. Otherwise, we're going to continue to suffer the, the tragedies, the usurpation, and the national calamities with the weather and other things that we have been suffering because we're sinning against our maker and an abomination a stench in his nostrils, if you will. <clears throat> that information can also be found in the later videos of the anti mishiach for Dummies series and in some of the other ones, but you have to be careful with some of the things on there. Test everything and prove what's true. Hold fast to that which is tov, right, or good. It was a fundamental principle of the order that the end justifies the means. By this code, lying, theft, perjury, assassination were not only pardonable, but commendable. 
when they serve the interests of the church. Under various disguises, the Jesuits worked their way into offices of state and education and ministry and every other venue where they can have some control for their purposes, which is also explained in the video by James Arabito, who was a Seventh-day Adventist, and he made a documentary about this stuff where Alberto Rivera, who's an ex-Jesuit, was exposing these things. He intentionally trained men in a variety of different denominational doctrines to be preachers and pastors. And then they'd go to the schools for them and go out and work for the purposes of Rome as spies. But every one of them was a Jesuit. They're all taught to do equivocation, mental reservation, lying, theft, cheating, everything that's satanic. <clears throat> this is climbing up to be the counselors of kings and shaping the policy of nations. They became servants to act as spies upon their er, upon their masters. They established colleges for the sons of princes and nobles and schools for the common people. And the children of Protestant parents were drawn into an observance of Catholic or Little Horn rites. <clears throat> All the outward pomp and display of the Romish worship was brought to bear to confuse the mind and dazzle and captivate the imagination. And thus the liberty for which the fathers had toiled and bled was betrayed by the sons. The Jesuits rapidly spread themselves over Europe, and wherever they went, there followed the revival of Catholicism. E.G. White, The Great Controversy, page 234, and 230 or through 235 Pacific Press Publishing 1911. The Jesuits function like the papacy's secret world police. They are very secretive and go to great lengths to keep their operations secret. They tell no one that they are Jesuits. To all outside appearances, they appear as normal people. One last author will be cited here. <clears throat> they are Jesuits, the Society of Men, after exerting their tyranny for upwards of 200 years, at length became so formidable to the world, threatening the entire subversion of all social order, that even the little horn whose devoted subjects they are and must be by the vow of their society was compelled to dissolve them. Little Horn Clemens suppressed the Jesuit order in 1773. They had not been suppressed, however, for 50 years before the waning influence of the Little Horn and despotism required their useful labors to resist the light of republic liberty. And it's a democratic liberty, but a democracy is antithesis to constitutional republic. All of our founders spoke against it, but it's more like what we're running now. And that's why you hear it all over the news. <clears throat> but it says, to resist the light of republic liberty and the little horn, Pius VII, simultaneously with the formation of the Holy Alliance, 1815, revived the order of the Jesuits in all their power. And do Americans need to be told what Jesuits are? They are a secret society, a sort of Masonic order with super added features of revolted odiousness and a thousand times more dangerous. They are not merely priests or of one religious creed. They are merchants and lawyers and editors and men of any profession, having no outward badge by which to be recognized. They are about in all your society. They can assume any character. 
that of angels of light or ministry. Richard, I've got to leave. I have some company came, so please forgive me. Sorry about that. Our brother had to go, but we'll go ahead and continue. I'll start back here again for continuity. It says, they are not merely priests or of one religious creed. They are merchants and lawyers and editors and men of any profession. Have you no outward badge by which to be recognized? They are about in all your society. They can assume any character, that of messengers of light or ministers of darkness, to accomplish their one great end. They are all educated men, prepared and sworn to start at any moment and in any direction and for any service, commanded by the general of their order, bound to no family, community, or country by the ordinary ties which bind men and sold for life to the cause of the Roman pontiff. J. Wayne Lawrence, The Crisis in America, or The Enemies of America Unmasked, G. D. Miller, 1855, pages 265 through 267. I was going to say that he's quoting a book here, and that was like three different quotes from other people that he went through. So uh, it threw me off for a moment, too. <clears throat> if anyone was worried about that, now you know. Ignatius Loyola founded the Jesuit order in the 1540s. Its position in the Roman Catholic Church was solidified during the Council of Trent, which ran from 1546 to 1563. The Council of Trent was convened with one great goal in mind, how to stop the Protestant Reformation. The Reformation began in 1517 when Martin Luther, the fearless German friar, nailed 95 theses on the door of the Wittenberg Chapel. The, these theses challenged, among other things, the heinous doctrine of indulgences taught by Rome that declared that a man could save himself and loved ones by dropping enough coins into the Catholic Church's coffers. And it was by doing this that they impoverished the people throughout Europe and built their uh, Vatican Cathedral there, the, the Basilica. Luther's great teachings that the Bible is the only standard for all doctrine and practice and that a person is declared right before Elohim through belief in Yahushua Mashiach alone sent thrills through the hearts of thousands throughout Europe and shock waves through the halls of the Vatican. Thus, the Council of Trent was convened to counter the Reformation. Hence, it is known as the Counter-Reformation. And the Jesuits would be the chief tools of Rome to undo and destroy every trace of Protestantism wherever it was found. America's two greatest documents, the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution, are filled with Protestant declarations that are absolutely intolerable to the Jesuits of Rome. Does it surprise you that the Vatican condemns the founding documents of the United States? The Vatican condemned the Declaration of Independence's wickedness and called the Constitution of the United States a satanic document. Avril Manhattan, The Dollar, and The Vatican. Ozark Book Publishers, 1988, page 26. Here is part of the Jesuit oath. I do further promise and declare that, and I won't ever do that myself, I'm just reading this, I apologize, that I will have no opinion or will of my own or any, or any mental reservation whatever, even as a corpse or cadaver, 
but will unhesitatingly obey each and every command that I may receive from my superiors in the militia of the little horn. I furthermore promise and declare that I will, when opportunity presents, make and wage relentless war, meaning they're not going to stop. That's why you have this constant bombardment of mass shooting, virus scare, other thing, you know, threat from Russia, threat from China. It's constant fear tactics and take away the rights, fear tactics and take away the rights. And the biggest one is mass shootings right now. But you'll see as we go along, this exposes all of that. This is that they will make and wage relentless war, secretly or openly, against all heretics, Protestants, and liberals. The liberals would be the people like JFK, who was a liberal Catholic that would not capitulate to every will or every whim, rather, of the little horn. All right, so yeah, John F. Kennedy was a Catholic. And he was put in place by Catholics as the first openly Catholic president. It was a great victory for Catholicism. They were so happy that they were able to accomplish that when they did. And then he wouldn't do as he was told. He actually looked into the... Um, he looked into the... Uh, Vietnam War, he had some guys go investigate what was going on there. And when they found out what they were doing, which you'll find out through this book, he wanted them out. Same thing with uh, wanting to print money according to the Constitution instead of the usurpation that Roman put in place. And because he was doing these things to the benefit of the people, contrary to the will of Rome, they made a very messy example of him because and explicitly because he was a liberal Catholic. But going on, it says, as I am directed to do to extirpate and exterminate them from the face of the whole earth, and that I will spare neither age, sex, or condition, and that I will hang, burn, waste, boil, flay, strangle and bury alive these infamous heretics, rip up the stomachs of, and the wombs of their women and crush their infants' heads against the walls. Which you remember it mentions in one of the Psalms. I was talking about that also in the book of the Gad the Seer videos. I believe it was the one for chapter two. But there's a Psalm that talks about when the children were taken into Babylonian captivity and they threw their harps into the trees, into the willows because they couldn't play a song of Zion while in captivity or in a foreign land. It mentions in there the daughter of Babel, who is Edom that is to be destroyed. And they said, prosperous is the one who returns on you what you did to us, who dashes your little ones against the rock. And while they literally did these things throughout what they called the Dark Ages, and you can find record of it in Fox's Book of the Martyrs. They swore oaths to do such things right here in their own creed for the Jesuit oath, if you will, or what they call the Fourth Oath of Induction. And it's a literal thing for them. But for us, again, we're to... Everyone that falls on the rock is to be broken, our Mashiach said. But everyone whom the rock falls on will be pulverized or crushed to pieces. Right? Ground to powder is another version. So that's the difference between them. They're doing it for your temporal, corporal death. But you're doing that for the eternal well-being. <clears throat> and it's to your eternal reward. It says that they crush the heads against the walls of their infants in order to annihilate forever their execrable, <clears throat> execrable race. That when the same cannot be done openly, 
I will secretly use the poisoned cup or the poisoned needle, like vaccinations for a fake germ virus that doesn't exist. The strangulating cord, the steel of the pinyard, or the leaden bullet, regardless of the honor, rank, or, or sorry, honor, rank, dignity, or authority of the person or persons, whatever may be their condition in life, either public or private, as I at any time may be directed so to do by any agent of the little horn or superior of the brotherhood of the holy faith of the society of the horse. Edwin A. Sherman, Engineering Corps of Hell, or Rome's Sappers and Miners, Private Subscription, 1883, pages 118 through 124. To think that a person would concur with such an abominable oath defies reason. <clears throat> One could not even imagine a more despicable oath. The word heretic in the above quote refers to anyone who disagrees with the little horn, and specifically with the Catholic Christian doctrine that was established by Sixtus III, foretold in Revelation, literally 666. He established and codified in what they call the Theodosian Codex in three. I want to say 332 AD, and it was at his codifying that that he was chosen and made the little horn. He ruled for eight years and died. But they established and codified in the, what they called the Theodosian, who was the emperor at the time, Codex. These laws, again, to be called Catholic Christians, to believe in a trinity of three co-equal, co-eternal beings, as opposed to the Father being alone, Elohim, and all things beside him created and less than him. Our Mashiach is the firstborn of creation, it says. But then also to follow the communion that the Catholics do, where they believe that they can turn away from wine into the literal blood and body of our Mishyach and then consume it. That is a usurpation of what the la what they call the Last Supper. Right? All the different things they usurp and put on there, he established, and he was the first one to keep December 25th a, doing the Mass then. And that was the abomination of desolation that was foreshadowed by Antiochus Epiphans. But while he set up a physical statue and slaughtered a pig on the altar, it literally, in a physical sense, in the temple there. Sixtus III did it to the temple of where Yahu is supposed to dwell, which is in the minds of men through his Ruach. And he abominates them through the practice of keeping the Mass on the December 25th that they've been doing since then. So that is literally... When that was established again in our country by Ulysses S. Grant after the Civil War, it was within a generation that you had the grievous sores upon men, the waters turning to blood, or what you call skin cancer, and red tide plaguing our country. That's when the incremental heat from the sun started scorching men with more intense heat, and it's only been getting worse and worse, what they call climate change, but it's all... It's a mix of things of our creator's judgment or rather creation's chastisement of the sinners and intentional weather manipulation from people who know how to do that. <clears throat> but again, none of this would happen if we weren't subjecting ourselves to the jurisdiction of the enemy. You could find this if you go and read through the book of Judges or Kings. Every time the children went perverted, their enemies would have dominion over them to do as they please every time they repented they would get their liberty which is why it says where the ruach of yahuwah is there is freedom or liberty right in a letter from john adams to then president thomas jefferson about the jesuits we read 
Shall we not have regular swarms of them here, in as many disguises as only a king of the gypsies can assume, dressed as painters, publishers, writers, and schoolmasters? If ever there was a body of men who merited eternal damnation on earth and in hell, it is the Society of Loyola's, the Jesuits. That's George Ramirez, the New Jesuits, Little Brown and Company, 1971. And just for clarification, that's a mistake. John Adams did not write to Thomas Jefferson while he was president. He actually lost his running a second time to Jefferson. And when Jefferson was running or when he was president, they were not speaking to each other for a while. It wasn't until 1812 that a fellow uh, American talked them into reuniting. And it was from that time until their death in 1828, where they were both poisoned on the 4th of July by Jesuits that uh, they had their discourses that are so famous and known today. I have the book at home, but all the letters that they wrote back and forth together are very interesting to read. This is Napoleon, Napoleon Bonaparte made this statement. <clears throat> the Jesuits are a military organization, not a religious order. Their chief is a general of an army not a mere father abbot of a monastery. And the aim of this organization is power. Power in its most despotic exercise. Absolute power. Universal power. Power to control the world by the volition of a single man. And that single man would be endowed and controlled by Satan. Because he is finite and can't be everywhere at once. Jesuitism is the most absolute of despotisms. And at the same time, the greatest and most enormous of abuses. The general of the Jesuits insists on being master, sovereign over the sovereign. Wherever the Jesuits are, admitted by the they will be masters, cost what it may. Their society is by nature dictatorial, and therefore it is the irreconcilable enemy of all constituted authority. Every act, every crime, however atrocious, is a meritorious work, if committed for the interest of the society of Jesuits or by the order of the general. General Mothalon, Memorial of the Captivity of Napoleon at St. Helena, page 62 and 174. There was no disguise that could not, or they could not assume, and therefore there was no place into which they could not penetrate. They could enter unheard the closet of the monarch, or the cabinet of the statesmen. They could sit unseen in convocation or general assembly, and mingle unsuspected in the deliberations and debates. There was no tongue they could not speak, and no creed they could not profess, and thus there was no people among whom they might not sojourn, and no church whose membership they might not enter and whose functions they might not discharge. They could extricate the little horn with the Lutheran, and swear the solemn league with the covenanter, or covenanter. The, the Lutheran would be a denomination that was brought up by Martin Luther's particular doctrines, which happened to adopt a lot of the formality or ceremonies of Rome, and they were one of the most proficient or prolific to reconcile and come back not too long ago, if you remember. The uh, Solemn League of the Covenanter was the Covenanters of Scotland, the Caledonians that had remained in the Woland after a while during the Reformation times, during the reign or during the time of the preaching of Ebenezer and Ralph Ernskine, which were full, foretold 
um, in the ancient history of Caledonia as eminent preachers during the time when the wrath of or the cloud of Elohim's wrath is turned away from them. They made the Re Reformed Church of Scotland and the covenanters recovenanted with their creator as a national covenant to keep his will. And they've had this separate thing since then, although they've also been infiltrated and have issues. That was from J.A. Wiley, The History of Protestantism, Volume 2, page 412. Quoted in Sidney Hunter, Is Alberta for real, or Alberto for real, Chick Publications, page 13. And they were trying to talk about the the authenticity of Alberto Rivera, who was a Jesuit who left the order and was exposing them. In light of these statements, several questions arise. Since the Jesuits began a direct assault on America in 1815, and nothing stands in their way, then are the policies carried out today in America under the control of the despot of Rome? Have the assassinations of certain presidents like Abraham Lincoln, William McKinley, James Garfield, and William Henry Harrison been Jesuit inspired? Also, George Washington, John Adams, Thomas Jefferson, James Madison, all, or sorry, not, yeah, Madison was poisoned as well, possibly, but Monroe, he was the founder of the Monroe Doctrine which was first purported by George Washington in his farewell address. And every one of those were an affront to Rome and the Jesuits, and they were, they were killed for it. Have the atrocities like Waco, Oklahoma City, and the destruction of the Twin Towers in New York City been planned behind the walls of the Vatican? What about our precious Constitution and the Bill of Rights that have come under such unrelenting attack in the past few decades? Is this the ultimate prize of the Jesuits to annihilate our precious freedoms that were purchased at so great a cost? The following chapters will analyze some of these very sobering questions. As if the Congress of Vienna was not clear enough. As to the objectives of the European monarchs and the Jesuit order, there were two more Congresses that were convened. The first of these was held at Verona in 1822. During this Congress, it was decided that America would be the target of Jesuit emissaries and that America was to be destroyed at all costs. Every principle, every principle of the Constitution was to be dissolved and new Jesuitical principles were to be put into place in order to exalt the Little Horn to dominion in America. <clears throat> and real quick, before I finish this, you can see that how far that was pushed in this last fake pandemic, as they like to call it, where your every right was usurped and violated by fiat mandate. OK, so the right to peaceably assemble, the right to freedom of speech, the right to do um, the things that are enumerated within the Constitution as unalienable, given from your creator, they violated every one of them they could get away with and people just took it for the most part. The other meeting was held in Cherie, Italy in 1825. Here is what was decided there. In 1825, some 11 years after the revival of the Jesuit order, a secret meeting of leading Jesuits was held at their college in, of Chery near Turin in northern Italy. At that gathering, plans were discussed for the advancement of the Little Horn's power worldwide 
for the destabilizing of governments who stood in the way and for the crushing of all opposition to Jesuit schemes and ambitions. What we aim at is the empire of the world. And that was a quote from Jacopo Leone's Secret Plans of the Jesuits. He was the neophyte or the initiate into the Jesuit order at that college in Cherie, who happened to overhear the entire thing and write it down in shorthand as he heard. He later left, escaped, and published it. <clears throat> These are also quotes from it. We must give them, great men of earth, or, to understand that the cause of evil, the bad leaven, will remain as long as Protestantism shall exist. That Protestant, that Protestantism, sorry, Protestantism, must therefore be utterly abolished. Heretics are the enemies that we are bound to exterminate. Then the Bible, that serpent with, with which head erect and eyes flashing threatens us with its venom, while it trails along the ground, shall be changed into a rod as soon as we are able to seize it. Hector McFarson, The Jesuits in History, Ozark Book Publishers, 1997. The goal of Cherie is clear. Destroy Protestantism at any cost and restore the temporal power of the papacy worldwide. Specifically, it was in that book and in the uh, Secret Plan of the Jesuits by Jacopo Leone. They intend to promote communism throughout the world and control it through that. And the communism was first founded by them, the Jesuits, in Paraguay, where they're reductionis. There's books written on that, too. It says, As we watch John Paul II transversing the world and being accepted worldwide as a man of peace, we can see how well the Jesuit plan instituted at Cherie is working. And John Paul, the little horn, was an actor. <clears throat> But he was foretold in Revelation during the time of the bull judgment. The, I think it was the third bull judgment where darkness is being poured out on the throne of the beast and then on the reign of the beast. He was born during a solar eclipse and he was buried on a solar eclipse. And it was during his time that they really got their control over America with the Holy Alliance with Reagan, recapitulating uh, diplomatic relations after cutting them for their involvement with the assassination of Lincoln that was known. And it was also their pouring out the darkness on the rain, where you have this Vatican Council II, the continuation of the Counter-Reformation with the ecumenical movement from that point forward. So you had the religious coming back together of all the denominations, which culminated in 1980 is being done when um, Alberto Rivera revealed that it was told to him, they would know that they had control over all the churches, all the denominations in America when the president would do the inaugural address in front of the phallic symbol or the Washington Monument which was accomplished by Reagan in 1981. This is, as we watch John Paul II transversing the world and being accepted worldwide as a man of peace, can we see how well the Jesuit plan instituted at Cherie is working? And since that time, you had a Nazi that was in power and stepped down, and then you had a Jesuit who is the open little horn today, Jorge Bergoglio, a Jesuit, and he came into both houses of Congress and the Senate and then went out in a standing ovation on the balcony of the Capitol. That's never been done by any president. And that was the little horn in America. Not only a few years ago, I believe that was 2017. 
So if you're having any doubt about what's going on and who thinks they have a victory in our country, maybe now it's starting to make more sense. But if it doesn't yet, keep following along. It definitely will. These three meetings at Vienna, Verona, and Chery were held with as much secrecy as possible. However, one man attended the first two meetings that would not be silenced. British Foreign Minister George Canning contacted the U.S. government to warn them that the monarchs of Europe were planning to destroy the free institutions of America. It was because of this conspiracy against the American republics by the European monarchies that the great English statesman Canning called the attention of our government to it. And our statesmen then, including Thomas Jefferson, who was still living at the time, took an active part to bring about the declaration by President Monroe in his next annual message to the Congress of the United States that the United States would regard it as an act of hostility to the government of the United States and an unfriendly act if this coalition or if any power of Europe ever undertook to establish upon the American continent any control of any American republic or to acquire any territorial rights. And that means North or South America. Papal, uh, the Little Horn was supposed to stay out and their holy alliance. That was what the Monroe Doctrine was all about. And that was why they were all poisoned for what they, they did with that. This is the so-called Monroe Doctrine. The threat under the secret treaty of Verona to suppress popular government in the American republics is the basis of the Monroe Doctrine. This secret treaty sets forth clearly the conflict between monarch monarchical government, government rather, and popular government, and the government of the few as against the government of the many. Burke McCarty, The Suppressed Truth About the Assassination of Abraham Lincoln, page 10. <clears throat> the Monroe Doctrine was America's first response to the Jesuits' Congress of Vienna and Verona. America would consider it an act of war if any European nation sought colonial expansion in the Western Hemisphere. The Jesuits have been able secretly to attack and infiltrate America to accomplish exactly what the Monroe Doctrine was stated to protect against. They have been able to get away with it because it was done with the utmost secrecy and under the facade of being a church. In a letter to President Monroe, Thomas Jefferson made the following observations. The question presented by the letters you have sent to me is the most monumentous which has ever been offered to my contemplation since that of independence. That made us a nation. Set This sets our compass and points the course which we are to steer through the ocean of time opening on us. And never could we embark on it under circumstances more auspicious. Our first and fundamental maxim should be never to entangle ourselves in the broils of Europe, mean, meaning no foreign wars. Oops. Right. <clears throat> Our second, never to suffer Europe to intermeddle with cis-Atlantic affairs. America... North and South has a set of interests distinct from those of Europe and peculiarly her own. Peculiarly her own. She should therefore have a system of her own, separate and apart from that of Europe. While the last is laboring to become the domicile of despotism, our endeavor should surely be to make our hemisphere that of freedom. 
and we don't live on a globe so they were confused about some things and that was one of them we must be declaring our protest against the atrocious violations of the rights of nations and by the interference of anyone in the internal affairs of another so flagraciously begun by bonaparte and now continued by the equally lawless alliance calling itself holy we will oppose with all of our means the forcible interposition of any other power the question now proposed involves consequences so lasting and effects so divisive or decisive of our future destinies as to rekindle all the interest I have hither, hitherto for, or heretofore felt on such occasions, and to inter, induce me to the hazard of opinions, which will prove only my wish to contribute still my might towards anything, and that might is like my penny, my two cents, if you will, towards anything which may be useful to our country. Archives, Mount Holyoke College. Jefferson saw this as a great crisis in Americans' young history <clears throat> because the wily and sinister Jesuits had been ordered to target America's destruction. The Monroe Doctrine challenged any advance on America by Europe. However, Monroe did not really comprehend or understand that the crafty Jesuits would not initially use force of arms to gain their objectives. They would use cunning, craftiness, and utmost secrecy. They would appeal to men's basis points. They would plant their agents in positions of wealth and power, and then use their influence to gain their great prize. The subversion and destruction of every Protestant principle as outlined in the Constitution of the United States. And with that, I think it's a good segue for next time. You all, thank you for attending. And if you have any comments or questions about what was shared or anything that you'd like to add or critique, please feel free to do so. Any Catholics that might be listening to this, I please check this out for yourself. Look up those quotes. Look up the books that I mentioned and uh, find these things out because being angry at me doesn't change the truth. His word foretold the Catholic usurpation of what was given by our Mashiach and the perversion of it. And I'm sorry to say that Catholicism is the most satanic religion in existence because it's blasphemous error. It takes and it makes a mockery of the truth. So I don't say that to be mean, but to get people to wake up and to to leave that system. Uh, these things are proven. That they've been dem demonstrably proven. They can be proven in a court of law. So I, I have no shadow of doubt about that. And Ob willing, Father willing, anyone who has a reasonable mind can see that too as we go on. Thank you for your time. Yahuwah be with you all. And we'll see you next time.